Hello everyone and welcome to the Pia Media channel. In this video I will tell you how you can turn your Aperture 200D from this to that. A short disclaimer at the beginning of this video. Everything you do happens on your own risk. Opening this lamp will most likely void the warranty. I am not liable for any damages you do to your 200D. I am a skilled repairman because I have a very technical hobby. For this repair you need a soldering iron, so you should have at least some experience in doing things like this. So let's go to the workbench and I will show you how it's done. Okay, so for this replacement you need a Torx T10 screwdriver and a small and slim Phillips tip screwdriver. I would recommend wearing gloves to not leave any fingerprints. Fortunately for this fix, all important screws are easily accessible from the outside. Unfortunately, we need to take apart everything, except for the yoke. The top cover is attached with four T10 screws and two Phillips screws on the underside of the handle. The balance mount is held in place with four T10 screws. Start with disassembling the top cover. Take out all six screws and pull it up. Next we take off the balance mount. Underneath you will find six countersunk T10 screws. Two more regular T10 screws are close to the yoke. Take out all of them. To be able to lift out the heatsink, you need to use your slim Phillips tip screwdriver and unscrew two black brackets to the left and right. These screws are very tight and small. You need to push down hard to not damage the screw head. With the help of a magnet, I pulled out both elements. Before you take out the whole light element, you need to loosen the handle and the PCB. All wires are soldered together, which makes this part a little inconvenient. Remove the four T10 screws next to the OLED panel and remove the back cover. Be careful to not rip off the ribbon cable. You can undo the ribbon cable by carefully unlocking this black clip. Next we need to unscrew the PCB with these two screws and unsolder the fan wires as these wires are extremely short and stuck to the fan. I am using a small tweezer to get this done cleanly. Unscrew the two black PCB screws and carefully remove the PCB to the top. You can now remove the whole heatsink by sliding it forward and spreading the plastic case a little bit. This is our bad guy. Aperture is using a 92 by 25 mm fan from Sunon. It is running on 12 volts and reaches around 2400 RPM max according to some technical specs I found online. This magnetic levitation fan should be fine, but somehow when you spin it with your fingers, you can already feel that it is running a little rough, as if there is something wrong with the bearing. I purchased two Amaran 200D and both have the same problem. Stick till the very end for a further elaboration on the Amaran's fan problem. You need to unmount the fan by using a slim T10 screwdriver. I could not believe my eyes. There are two mounting options pre-manufactured in this case. Maybe the 100D is using a smaller fan? I don't know. I tested the 200D with an 80mm Noctua and found out that it ran hotter than the stock 92mm fan due to the smaller surface area. I definitely recommend buying a similar 92mm fan to get the same performance. This is why I went with a Be Quiet Pure Wings 2 92mm fan with a 3 pin connection. It reaches around 1900 RPM at 12 volts. Let's exchange the fan. Mount the new fan with two self tapping T10 screws. Not all corners are identical, only two fit without modification, which is fine. The Be Quiet comes with a 3 year warranty by the way. Um, okay, never mind. 
Make sure to mark your ground and plus wire. If you forgot the orientation, take a peek behind the sticker. Tuck the remaining cable away because there is very limited space between the PCB and the fan. Reinsert the PCB in the cooler. Secure the PCB with the two tiny screws. Screw in the LED element at the front and at the bottom of the light. For further safety, you can reinstall the Bowens mount in the LED safety cap. Now you can solder the fan wire in the same sequence as you unsoldered the original one. Do not forget to carefully reinsert the ribbon cable. Reassemble the back cover by using the four longer T10 screws. Do not forget to put the brackets back in place. Use moderate pressure with your screwdriver to not damage the screws. In the end, mount the top cover with all six screws. Do not forget the two Philips ones at the handle. Your Amaran 200D is now ready to test. I tested pre and post temperatures at full brightness and let the light run for 30 minutes. At 20 degrees Celsius ambient, the original fan maxed out at 52 degrees on smart fan mode, while the fan was spinning at around 1400 RPM. The Be Quiet fan maxes out at 55 degrees on smart fan mode at the same RPM. On medium fan mode, all fan options target 1500 RPM. The takeaway here is that Aperture has a predefined fan speed for cooling, not a predefined voltage. The Noctua did not spin much faster even though the light was getting hotter, so this is why I would recommend using a bigger fan with more airflow, instead of a smaller one. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm very pleased with my Amaranth right now, they are virtually silent. It was totally worth opening these lights and spending $10 to get them fixed and I hope you are successful with your repair as well. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and if you want to support my channel, hit subscribe. Don't forget to take a look at my previous videos and see you soon.